All right, this is my box opening. I kind of undid the, the staples so we wouldn't have to deal with that. For my 2012 BMW 335i convertible. Uh, you can go online and check out the videos on how to pull the radiator. There's a ton of them. If you're doing a convertible, those don't all work because there's a couple extra braces like this cross brace right here. There's two. There's one that actually runs up that way. It's got to come out. Um, so it doesn't come out the bottom. It comes out through the top. Super tight fit. Pain in the ass to do. But if you've got a cracked radiator like mine, you have no choice. And if you've done a bunch of upgrades uh, like I have, then the dealer doesn't really want to work on the car. So all that was wrong with my factory radiator, this car's got about 65,000 miles on it, is you can see that crack right there. So it just had that little tiny crack. Um, it was just a slow seep. But, it, you know, I noticed it because uh, I checked the coolant level and it was down a little bit. You know, I opened the, you know, opened up the bottle. I don't remember why, but I looked inside and it was down a little bit. And I was like, oh, that's kind of unusual. Started looking around and it was, had this little seepage line, you know, running down. So to get it out, you know, even if you're just a stock N55, you got to pull the intercooler in my case. Taking it out uh, an Evolution Raceworks cooler is simple, but the dealer doesn't want to deal with that, so you'll be doing it yourself. All right, getting to the radiator. Box is nice, double walled box, right? Stapled. Um, the radiator core is supported, which is nice. I got it because it's really not that much more than the factory radiator, and uh, it supposedly cools a lot better so it's a different fin design um, I might change the maps in it to get a little more power out of the car I don't really think so it's this is my daily driver and it makes decent power with um, it's got a race chip set on high actually if you're gonna put that in it takes a little while <laughs> but you can't just turn it all the way up and then start driving the car like that because it, it'll pop a bunch of codes but uh, this one's got the charge pipe in it from ER. Um, it's got a couple things. Uh, CTS oil filler because these things crack and they're crap and it's cheap to just put a billet one in. Uh, I don't really think that that drops the cooling or the, the oil temp with the cooling fins, but whatever. Anyways, uh, clamps and everything are super easy to take off. You know, they're just the typical pop the clip out and then just got to work them back and forth. Um, they don't really go back and forth that much when you're trying to get them out. But let's take a look at this. I'm probably going to leave the... Um, oh, I'm probably going to leave this hard... Um, whatever it is. Some kind of cardboard, plastic cardboard cover on it. So that um, when I'm putting it in, it doesn't jack it up. So you can see the fittings on it are bitching. I mean, everybody that, that gets these says they're awesome, but the craftsmanship is fantastic, so don't really think it matters whether it's polished or not, right? Nice. Banging into my car. So there's a little set pin, right, to guide your lines on. One of the better upgrades that I did do to this car, I'll say the most fun upgrade to this car so far, has been the brake upgrade. Those are 19Z uh, Porsche Brembo calipers on a 380 plus millimeter rotor. Look how thick that thing is. I think it's... 40 some odd millimeters. I don't remember. It's freaking huge though. Anyways, uh, this car stops ridiculously fast. So the next step will be, um, I haven't even worn out the Brack brakes. They're original on this car. The car's got over 60,000 miles. But it um, will be uh, Brembo GT brakes on the back. So that'll be a nice upgrade. So this is pretty cool. I mean, there, you know, there's a lot of 
care taken into the packaging of this radiator, which is nice. I'm not going to take it all the way out because like I said I got to put it in um, it looks beautiful though I mean it, it is awesome hopefully it goes in easier than the old one came out it's you know I don't think it really matters that it says CSF because you won't be able to see it and I don't really think that it matters that it's polished, but at least is the selling point for them. You know, it's got a good warranty on it. Um, it's bitching, so I don't know what the difference is in their core, but they say it's, you know, different, like some Be Cool core or something like that. I don't know, but you can check it out. All right, I'll let you know how it fits next. And then, um, you know, it's supposed to be more efficient. I don't think we're going to really see anything in there unless we, um, unless we change around the maps. And I might change the cooling maps around. The other upgrade that I really enjoyed was um, Turner's monoball. Since I'm under here. Where is it? Those things are fantastic. Oh my God, they're, those getting rid of the slop in the front end of this car. Let me see. And it also came with um, M3 lowers. So also a monoball there. That was what, those two front end upgrades right there. Oh my God, completely transformed this car. So, all right, we kind of did a, a little overview of a few different things. Definitely was uh, smarter to leave the plastic on. I can sneak it out from the top and the bottom. It actually went in easier than it came out, which is kind of nice because, like I said, it was a pain in the ass to get out. So, um, one other thing on the oil cooler, it's two pieces. So, you have this piece right here um, one bolt, two bolts, and then kind of underneath, right in there, is the third bolt. Uh, you know these things all leak down in here so most people they pull the intake what I noticed was you know I was looking at the oil like the oil path and mine was coming out from not here but down inside this let me see if I have that gasket still what did I do with it? there it is so this is the gasket right mine was leaking right in here on the back side um, I don't know if you can tell but well, you can see how it was wet right there. So, um, it leaks right through there. And instead of pulling the intake and all this crap up here and everything, I figured I'd take a shot at it. You know, three bolts. Um, I was able to just pull this back, get in there, clean it all up, clean up the backside, pull the gasket out, put a new gasket in. It looks like that's gonna seal it. And I won't have to take off this other half because to take off this other half, there is a fastener hiding down in there, that one right there, that you can't get off. Oh, wait, is it that one? Anyway, it's one of those two down in there. You can't get off this other half of this adapter without pulling the intake. So that would be a pain in the ass. You know, because now you're going to pull the upper cowl or the cowl cover and all that crap to get in underneath there. So if I snuck it out just by doing this, that's going to be awesome. So that's my secondary tip. All right, it was simple. I undid the three pieces of tape that I showed you guys before, and that's it. Out here. So the radiator's only held in by these two, I would call them sheet metal screws, but whatever. Um, one of them goes right in there and one uh, on the other side about in the same spot right up in there so right in there and then underneath we'll take a look there's just a trough uh, on this side it fits down in that 
that little thing right there goes in there like that same kind of thing on this side um, I don't know if you can see it there it is right there same little V it just drops see it drops in there that's the fan mount right there fan shroud mount there's only a couple bolts that hold the fan on there's the other side these lines right here these are the uh, power steering cooler lines. Wow, are they a pain in the ass. It looks like there's plenty of room right now, but that, those lines right there, and the AC lines, you can kind of see them up there. I don't want to move that hose because I'll get a bath of coolant. But there's an AC line up there. I guess we could go up to the top. Let's finish down here. You'll see the two things that kind of make it a pain in the ass to get it in and out. Just giving you guys some close-up stuff. <laughs> so on the top side, like I said, it's those AC lines right there. They're so close right there. So between those two on the top, those two power steering right there, man, it's, it's pain. All right, here's one other thing I want to touch on. So the shroud is held in through here and through here. And it just kind of clips in on this side, right? It's got a bail and it just clips in. This side, it just kind of sets in there. And then up here, it just has one sheet metal type screw. Oh, actually, it's right here. Sorry about that, like before. And when we went to put the shroud in, it didn't line up on those two. So if we look down in here, that one didn't line up. The bolt did, the bolt's fine. We look down there, it's off about half an inch, three quarters of an inch. And on this side, oh, it's kind of hard to tell. They put the bolt in there to kind of sit in that little channel, but it doesn't even line up with the channel. So that was disappointing. Other than that, everything fit. You kind of get an idea now of how tight it is in there. Um, as I said, if you've got a convertible, this strut rod right here runs through. You can't even see where the heck it goes. It goes there, and then it goes underneath across the front of the motor down let's see you kind of see it right in there and down and down to right there when you look up in there you know you can look through the fan it's right there so if you have a convertible it's best to leave that off because you won't be able to get anything in or out while it's let's see there you go while it's in there <laughs> 